So I was a, uh, what we call a session musician in New York, in the secular field. And uh, I was working on uh, uh, Sat Saturday Night Live and all sorts of, uh, you know, a, a shows, you know, television shows and movies and all that. And I uh, did a lot of work on uh, television commercials. But in the meantime, I'm still, I'm just uh, not religious at all. Uh, uh, once I left my, pa my parents' house, you know, once I, uh, you know, any kind of religion went out, went out the door. So in the early 80s, Avram Fried asked me to go on the road with him to uh, be his musical director. And um, I remember the first job that I did was in, at a Chabad house in um, Richmond, Virginia. And then we started traveling more and more all over the world. And every time we went to a Chabad house, you know, Lima, Peru, Santiago, Chile, uh, the West Coast, the Mid-States, wherever, wherever we went, these, some of these Chabad houses were like palaces. And I got, I mean, I was so impressed by it. And it brings Yiddishkeit to the... Um, to the community, and it builds, and I'm saying, this is an unbelievable thing. I mean, it's unbelievable. And I, and I said to him, I said, but Avramo, how did the Rebbe know to send this particular guy to this particular place and that he would succeed? He said, that's the Rebbe. And I got energized. Now, we were spending a lot of time together, Avramo and I, and of course, it starts to rub off a little bit, you know? He bought me a pair of tefillin. He taught me how to put them on. And I, from that point forward, I started putting them on every day. And so he, by divine intervention, brought me back to God. In the late 80s, early 90s, we were in Europe. I don't remember exactly where. Could have been Switzerland, could have been Austria. And he goes to the train station to uh, buy a ticket uh, to go to the next location. And after the ticket, goes down to the um, station, the platform, waiting for the train. And within a few minutes, all of a sudden, there's an officer coming towards. And it's frightening, you know. It's frightening. What, what's going on here? And he goes over to a Vremel and he says, uh, Herr Fried, uh, you left your wallet at the, at the ticket counter. And he, he says, oh, oh yeah, but, but how did you know it was my wallet? He says, well, you have to forgive me, but I needed to look into the wallet to see identification of who it would be. And when I opened it up, there was this picture of your father. And it's a picture of the Rebbe. And the Rebbe says, yes, you're right, that is my father. So talking about wallets, this brings me to another interesting story, is um, right down the road here in Paramus, which is where we are now, is a very famous cigar, a cigar store called j &R Cigars. And I partake of cigar here and there, and I went in there one day, and uh, browsing around, and I noticed a rather disheveled looking guy uh, kind of heavy set, wearing like construction kind of clothes. But I don't know, I have a feeling that he's a yid. I just have a feeling. So I'm looking around and I find a couple of cigars and now I go over to the cash register <clears throat> to pay and I open up my wallet and right there in my wallet is a picture of the Rebbe, right there in the very front. Now this guy is standing behind me that I'm talking about. And after I pay, he says, excuse me. He says, is that a picture of the Rebbe? I said, yes, yes. He says, do, do you know the Rebbe? I said, well, yeah. He says, oh, he says, this is, this is such a, this is a miracle that's happening right now. I said, really? He said, yeah. He says, I just came from the oil to get a blessing because I'm going through a very trying time in my business. And uh, I figured I'll take the rest of the day off and I'll drive into the New Jersey and get a cigar and I'll sit outside and I'll smoke my cigar. He says, but that you opened up the wallet and there was the picture of the Rebbe. He answered me right there and then. So now I'm going to go home and I'm going to daven because I didn't get a chance to do it this morning. 
because I know that everything is going to be okay and my prayers have been answered. I mean, think about this. For me to be there at that particular time when this guy was going through his thing, that what are the odds of that? Astronomical. But even further, that I would be on the line ahead of him and he would be looking down and I would open up my wallet. That was all preordained. It was all meant to happen. I was there as the Rebbe's messenger to send a message to this guy that everything was going to be just fine.